I didn't expect to live to be 50. I was going, look, we're so on our way to screwing ourselves that I was like, I'm going out fighting. I'm going down hard, I don't care. We would be out in the middle of the North Atlantic and we would have casts of nuclear waste swinging over our head and we would look at the crane operator going, do it, do it. You're either gonna do this or not. Put it away or go home or you're gonna, you know, if you wanna kill me, I'm fine with it. The Native Americans up in, um, in Alaska told us, said it's a good day to die. Everybody's gonna do it. Go out doing something that matters. There's, you know, there's karmic value in that. And I was like, and of course I was 20 years old and I said, I'm okay with that. I surfed big waves in a kayak, Maverick. Every time you go out on something 40 feet long, it could happen. So you know what, you either live or you don't. You know, taking the safe route is not necessarily, it's just never been my path. And so I decided that I was really not gonna do that with my art either. And if it pisses people off, I don't care. I don't care. I just don't care. I'm gonna fire this puppy up. I'm a waterman. I live on the water. I have always been more comfortable either under or in the water than I have been on, on the planet. So today, you know, I was out catching rockfish. So of course I'm thinking about how the rockfish stocks out here have gotten better because of the regulations and the things that we've put on there. But I was also sitting outside the kelp forest, at, outside Jack O'Neill's house. Kelp is one of those things that um, not a whole lot of people understand. We have a rainforest, a subtropical rainforest, up in the mountains over here. Or you can go look at the aquatic version of that that's sitting 100 yards offshore. And I can make kelp out of rusty old crap. And, and um, a lot of times my artwork will be about getting people into approaching the things that are really right there for them to approach. The funny part about this is that I know these fish so well now that I can almost, when I'm hammering, I can almost feel them. And so, you know, the, the shape of these animals is almost like a muscle memory. It's a very strange sensation when you think about it. But after you get to know something this well, it begins to be more of a visceral thing than it is a tactile thing. So in a way, it's kind of like, we know these animals and after, once you get to know them well enough, um, they become sort of friends of yours, right? You can feel their body as you're, and this is a, you know, these are, this is food, but there's also something else going on behind that. And whenever I harvest anything alive, I take great pains to make sure that nothing suffers. I respect the, 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 the environment that's giving me food, that's sustaining me. And that's the whole reason for my art, is that the sustenance and the way that the, the environment that sustains me needs to be respected. It needs to be treated with love and reverence. I would not eat farm-raised fish. I would not eat factory-caught fish. I only eat the fish that I catch. It's like with anything else that you do in your life, when you walk on the planet, you have to do it as gently as you can. Most of what I do and the message that I have is for people to get out there and experience these things so that they understand how important they are to our survival. This is not a casual thing. This is, a, a, this is really, on a fundamental level, the food we eat, the environment we have, the air we breathe, the water we have is all dependent on all of these little parts of which we are just one, not the dominant ones.